Hello, good evening, one and all, our dear students, friends joining us. Uh, we are live on YouTube as well. It is a cold November evening, but good, a very warm good evening nonetheless uh, to one and all. Welcome to this webinar organized by the uh, Department of Value Education and the ITUAC of uh, St. Anthony's College, Shillong. The talk today is the first of many in the lineup of events as uh, St. Anthony's jo uh, College joins the rest of the state in celebrating its 50 years of statehood. And what a wonderful way to commence this uh, program. We have in our midst, Professor David Aimley, uh, who is uh, a renowned historian, and he has agreed to grace this occasion with his presence. But before we move forward, I would like to invite Father Joby Joseph, uh, Rector, St. Anthony's College, to please lead us in prayer. Thank you, Dr. Amanda. Let's place ourselves in the presence of God as we begin this day. We ask God's presence, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to be over us. That we surrender this day, we surrender our state of Meghalaya and all the peoples living in the state, the leaders, those in the administration, and every person. We listen to a reading from the Holy Bible from the book of Psalm, Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host by the breath of God's mouth. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came into. The counsel of the Lord stands forever the thoughts of his heart to all generations. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees the whole humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. But our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to listen to the making of our state of Mechalia. We thank you for Professor David RCM Lee, a renowned historian, to grace this occasion to speak to us. Bless him, bless his intentions and his family. And we pray for all those listening to today's webinar. Lord, may your hand be on all of us, keep us always in good health and pray in a very special way for our state that there be peace, tranquility, and unity. Watch over us and guide and lead us. In your precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Joby Joseph. And now we move to the reason why we're all here, and that is to hear Professor David's Aimley. Um, sir, uh, sir David's Aimley, I consider it my great privilege to welcome you, sir, and to, um, to, to introduce you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I would just like to give a short introduction of Sir David Imley. He is the former chairperson of the UPSC. He is the former vice chancellor of the Rajiv Gandhi University, Arunachal Pradesh. He is the former controller of examination, Nehu. And uh, he's also the IQAC member of uh, St. Anthony's College. He's a renowned historian who is leading the core team that is um, placing together a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of parts in preparation of the 50 years celebration of Megalia uh, next year. And one of these elements is the, is the preparation of something um, like a coffee table book, which is a celebration of Megalia's 50 years of statehood. So, sir, thank you so much for being here. If I can, uh, if I can see you, sir. Sir David. Yes. Yes. Professor Emily, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you for being here, and I hand over the rest of the time to you. Thank you.
Thank you, Amanda, for your kind words. Thank you, Father Joby, for inviting me to St. Anthony's College. It's a cold evening, as Amanda has said, but it's uh, a delightful time in Shillong with the cherry blossoms. And as much as others are celebrating this happy event in the state, we at St. Anthony's College are initiating the beginning of discussions on, on uh, the happy event leading to the foundation of Meghalaya. I bring you warm greetings from my family. And though my wife is not here with me listening to this uh, lecture, since I'm, I'll be able to see it on YouTube, I guess my family and my near and dear ones and friends and students too will be able to participate. Thank you very much for this arrangement. I have decided to speak on the Hill State Movement in Meghalaya. The political mover, maneuverings in its creation were long and arduous and yet it was accomplished with dignity and the end achieved through constitutional means. It would be refreshing to recall this facet of history of Meghalaya. We'll be observing its 50th foundation in January 2022. This lecture is a revised version of the fourth P.A. Sangma Memorial Lecture delivered on 1st September 2020 on the birth anniversary of this fine leader and gentleman of a politician. And organized by Nehu Tura Campus and the PA Sangma Endowment. I will now move on to the lecture. And first I will give the political background. As a starting point, mention should be made, though very briefly, of three resistant movements in the hill, of the hill people against British expansion and rule. We from these hills are fairly familiar with the heroism of three freedom fighters, Uttirat Singh, Ukyang Nongba, and Pa Togan Sangma, and their collaborators in the struggle against British rule. Quite significant too was the effort of Sonaram Sangma, the first Garo political figure in the first decade of the 20th century to stake claims over portions of Bijni and Habragat estates in Assam. Garos, whose lands were encroached upon by Zamindars, approached Sonaram Sangma for advice, guidance, and requested him to lead their movement. He extended the sphere of his operations to demand restoration of reserve forests and the abolition of forced labor, Begar as it was called, after long drawn agitation of which the Dolgoma disturbance of December 1902 is prominent, an inquiry was conducted. It resulted after many years in 1908 in a settlement on all three counts to little satisfaction of Sonaram Sangma, who continued his agitation for another two years. Though political activity for constitutional reform can hardly be said to have existed in these hills, Khasi chiefs and subjects were showing signs of increased political awareness from the 1920s. The expression of this is evident in their various statements, memorials, and the like that they prepared and submitted to various authorities over many years, commencing in 1921, 1928, 1929, and again in 1932 in a conference of Khasi states. The gist of these indicated their loyalty to the British government, while at the same time providing criticism of British policy towards the Khasi states. The chiefs particularly wanted a reconsideration of their status. In the wake of constitutional changes in India towards the end of British rule, Khasi chiefs were anxious to know what their future would be. Lord Irwin, the Viceroy, in a reply to an address presented by the people of the Khasi Hills, made it clear that, and I quote him, whatever the constitutional developments may be, I have no doubt that the rights and privileges of this aims will be safeguarded, and that, so far as may be practicable, steps will be taken to preserve the national individuality of the Khasi race. 
This was followed by the more hectic political activity of the Khasi National Durbar set up in 1923. In line with the general policy of the British in giving the Indian states a political role, and after the discovery of the Calcutta High Court ruling of 1884, that the Khasi chiefs were ruling chiefs, Lord Linlithgow, the Governor General, advised the Khasi states to federate, to come together. In 1934 was established the Federation of Khasi States, which, despite the enthusiasm for such an organization, was all but defunct a few years later. I now move to integration. The Federation of Khasi States was revived in 1946, shortly before the lapse of British rule. This came in the wake of developments that took place with the transfer of power by the British government. The Khasi states had three options of remaining independent, of joining one or the other of the two dominions, and a third alternative of federating among themselves. In early April 1945, it was reported that the tribal people were beginning to take a more vocal interest in their own future. A meeting in Shillong, which contained most of the prominent men, opposed emphatically their inclusion in either Pakistan or India. In July 1947, an agreement was reached between the states and Sir Akbar Haidari, the governor of Assam, on the three terms that Sadar Vallabhai Patel had asked the states to accept. On 9th August, the Khasi states signed the, the standstill agreement. They agreed that with effect from 15th August 1947, all existing arrangements between the province of Assam and the Indian Dominion on the one hand and the Khasi states on the other should continue to be in force for a period of two years or until new or modified arrangement, arrangements should be arrived at between the authorities concerned. The Government of India found a problem when it came to getting the Khasi states to sign the instrument of accession. On 2nd December that year, Akbar Haidari informed the Khasi chiefs that he had brought with him from Delhi the instrument of accession and they should sign it. It was accordingly agreed that all the 25 chiefs should assemble at the governor's residence on 15 December that year and in individually sign the instrument. 20 chiefs signed the instrument that day. The remaining five Hemas signed the instrument of accession in March the following year. The Khasi states had, accept, had acceded into India, but refused to merge on the ground that the chiefs were elected heads of their respective states. Their refusal caused Sardar Vallabhai Patel to visit Shillong on 1st, 2nd January 1948. His meeting with the chiefs ended in a stalemate over the merger issue. For the Khasi said that only a duly constituted Darbar of the states could decide on such a decision. Accordingly, rules were drawn up by the Dominion agent for the nomination and election of members of the Khasi state's constitution making Darbar. The Darbar was inaugurated on 29th April 1949. While the Khasi state's constitution making Darbar had just been convened, the Indian Constituent Assembly was preparing the final draft of the constitution. Included in its discussions were the provisions for the sixth schedule, the product of the Northeast Frontier Assam Tribal and Excluded Areas Subcommittee headed by Gopinath Bordoloi, the Assam Premier. Its report submitted to the Constituent Assembly on 28th July 1947, provided for the establishment and functioning of several ADCs of Assam, including two ADCs for the Garo and the Khasi and Jantia Hills. The pace of political activity in the hills increased shortly before the independence of India to include Garo participation. The Garo National Council was formed in 1946 with Modi Marak as president and E. Sangma as general secretary. The Garo National Council submitted a memorandum to the Bordoloi Committee 
demanding complete control of the district administration by an elected tribal council. It suggested continuation of links with Assam on several subjects, including education, health and transport. It should be noted that one day before the Constitution of India was adopted, it should be noted that one day before the Constitution of India was adopted, the governor of Assam summarily passed an order cancelling the Khasi States Federation Administration of Justice Order 1948 and its supplement of the same year. The Khasi States Administration of Justice Order 1950, which came into force on 25th January 1950, entrusted civil and criminal justice to the Deputy Commissioner of the Khasi and Jayanti Hills District. The integration process, therefore, was completed by legislative and executive orders without merger agreements. Having gone into this background, I now come to the section on Hill State Movement. The close of colonial rule and the ushering in of freedom and self-governance brought in many more changes for the tribes and communities of what was to become Meghalaya. While the connection with Assam and its people had been long and profound, the tribal people in time asserted their right to govern themselves at higher levels of governance. Scarcely had the British left when Assam's representatives in the Constituent Assembly advanced assimilationist views. Strong protests were raised by them in the Constituent Assembly when the sixth schedule was taken up for discussion. One of the uh, one of them said, we want to assimilate the tribal people, said a member of the Constituent Assembly from Assam. We were never given that opportunity so far, he went on to say. The Hill people, however, did not want to be assimilated in this manner. It would not be long before the cordial relations between the Assamese and the Hill tribals would be tested. The genesis of a separate Hill state movement for the tribal communities in the Northeast was a rally of students and youth in Shillong held on 27th June 1952, led by Hoover Henyota. It starts on 27th June 1952 in a movement led by Hoover Henyota, agitating against the principle of nomination in the composition of the newly constituted district councils. The issue subsequently broadened to include a memorandum submitted by the Khasi National Darbar by its president, Babu Wilson Reed, to Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru on 19th October. Among several issues, the memorandum brought to the notice of the Prime Minister their objections to a proposal of making Assamese the state language of Assam and the desire for unification of the hills in the region under one administration. This was the impetus for a meeting in Shillong in June 1954, convened by Captain Williamson A. Sangma, the chief executive member of the Garu Hills Autonomous District Council, the CEMs of the district councils discussed things of mutual interest, largely the formation of a separate hill state and amendments to the sixth schedule. Prime Minister Nehru, who received a report of the meeting, was supportive for greater autonomy of the hill districts within Assam, and that they should be allowed to say, to use his own words, allowed to feel that they, they are looking after themselves. The chief minister of Assam, Bishnu Ram Medhi, though, thought the time was not opportune to think in terms of more autonomy to the district councils. Please note that the district councils had only just been established in 1952. Soon after this, Captain Sangma convened a meeting of the Assam Hill Tribal Leaders Conference in Tura from 6th to 8th October 1954. Largely attended by persons connected with the district councils, the Tura Conference resolved to submit a memorandum to the state's reorganization committee, demanding a hill state to be known, interestingly, as the Eastern Hills State, to comprise of six ADCs 
and the tribal areas of Nifa. It was also decided to form a Hill Tribal Union with an ad hoc committee with Captain Sangmar as chairman and Bibi Lingdo as secretary. The committee included as members the advocate A.S. Kongpai, Babu Wilson Reed, the parliamentarian J.B. Hagjer, and the politician B.M. Pugh, and Mr. B.M. Roy. The state's reorganization committee was not in favor of a hill state. Rather, it recommended that special attention be paid to the development of the Assam Hill districts. A third meeting of the Hill leaders was held at Aizol between 26 to 28th October 1955. The meeting expressed its concern at the state's reorganization committee's inability to appreciate the aspirations of the tribal people and reiterated its demand for bringing the hills in Northeast India under one administration. The Eastern India Tribal Union was formed, was formally put in place at this meeting. 1957 was a year of hectic political activity with elections for the Lok Sabha, the Assam legislature and the district councils. Common in all the activity of the Eastern India Tribal Union was the demand for a hill state. Despite tribal aspirations and differences, small, smaller regional parties were supportive of the larger body. In this situation, the EITU was able to sway opinion further for constitutional and administrative reforms. Its attempt at an All India platform, however, was elusive. A way out of this situation was the center's persuasion that the EITU leaders become partners in the administration of the state. The inclusion of tribal representatives in the Assam Ministry of newly elected Chief Minister Bimal Prasad Chaliha, with Captain Sangma as cabinet minister in charge of tribal areas and ADCs was an attempt to appease the tribal leaders. It resulted in the demand for a hill state receding in the background for some time. More than a response to the creation of the state of Nagaland, it was the decision of the Assam government to introduce a bill in its legislative assembly for Assamese as the official language of Assam that renewed the demand for a hill state. Chief Minister Chaliha first announced this intent in March 1960. A second announcement was made in June that year. The statements were not received with enthusiasm other than in the Brahmaputra Valley. It was not received well, very naturally, in the hill districts and Kachar. Captain Sangma again called hill leaders, irrespective of party affiliation, to meet in Shillong 6 to 7th July 1960 to discuss the situation arising out of the impending legislation. The meeting was hectic for the resolution taken to establish the All-Party Hill Leaders Conference. The meeting further expressed its strong opposition to the move to declare Assamese as the official language of the state and urged the government of Assam to consider dropping the proposed bill. The All-Party Hill Leaders Conference held its second conference in Shillong 22nd to 23rd August 1960. A resolution was adopted that the Hill people would have no alternative but to demand for separation from Assam should the controversial language bill be passed. The bill was introduced in the Assam Legis Legislative Assembly on 10th October 1960. It was opposed by tribal leaders, tribal members of the cabinet who resigned in protest. On 24th October, the APHLC staged a hartal with massive demonstration in Shillong. That night, the Assam Assembly held a special session and adopted the language bill. This was followed by the APHLC's third meeting, 16th to 18th November at Haflong. The meeting was chaired by Member of Parliament J.B. Hagjer, and it resolved that the passage of the bill was clear proof of the Assamese community to avail themselves of undue advantage to enhance their dominion over the hill people. 
The meeting drafted a constitution for the proposed state and decided to send a delegation to meet the prime minister. I now move on to a section which I call another 10 years, another, another 10 years onward. An APHLC delegation met the prime minister on 25th November 1960. The language issue was raised. An assurance was given to the party representatives that Assamese would not be imposed on the tribal people. At a third, at a second meeting two days later, the delegation was informed that the only satisfactory solution to the matter was to provide the hill areas full autonomy. Pandit Nehru offered what came to be called the Scottish Patent Plan. The Council of Action of the APHLC discussed the offer and found it impracticable, reiterating again its demand for a hill state. The 1962 elections was fought on the issue of the Scottish Patent Plan against the Hill State. Subsequently, with the election of a fairly large number of legislators, the APHLC further pressed its demand on the verdict of the elections. However, its rigid demands dampened the intention of the Prime Minister in his meetings with G.G. Swell, their Member of Parliament. What next ensued was the appointment of the Pataskar Commission on the Hill Areas of Assam. Appointed in March 1965, the Commission failed to consider the assurance given by Pandit Nehru, the former Prime Minister, that the Hill Areas be given greater autonomy. It proposed no basic change in the sixth schedule. Consequently, the APHLC rejected the recommendations of the Commission, announced its decision to resort to direct action with a boycott of the elections of 1967. The pace of developments for a hill state quickened with Indira Gandhi's assumption of the office of prime minister. She came to Shillong on 27th December 1966. Following discussion between the Assam chief minister Chaliha and the APHLC in early January the following year, came the much awaited promise of the reorganization of Assam. This came in President Dr. Sarvapali Radhakrishnan's address in Parliament on 18th March 1967. 18th March 1967. In line with this assurance of government, appointed Ashok Mehta, a cabinet minister, to head a commission composed of representatives of political parties of Assam. The APHLC found the recommendation of the Commission to give maximum autonomy to each tribal area on the ground that each area being different from the other in many aspects of life was very divisive. The party rejected the plan and called for non-violent agitation on 10 September 1968. Green-capped volunteers picketed the Assam Secretariat at Shillong. By this time, fissures in the unity of the movement led by the Congress in the North Kuchar and Mikir Hills to accept the recommendation of the Mehta Commission. By then, a section of the Lushai Hills had taken a different course of political action. We now move to the making of the state of Meghalaya. The first decisive steps step towards a hill state came on 11 September 1968 with the announcement by the center of the reorganization of Assam. It provided for an, an autonomous state for the Garo, Khasi and Janti hills with an option for the Mikir hills and the North Kachar hills to join the state on the basis of a resolution adopted by a majority of not less than two thirds of the members of their district councils. The announcement provided for a legislative assembly and a council of ministers with provision for taxation under a number of subjects assigned to the state. The Assam High Court, the Assam State Electricity Board, and the Assam Public Service Commission would continue to have jurisdiction in the proposed state. The North Kachar and Mikir Hills chose to remain with Assam. The plan did not include the Mizo district in view of the disturbed conditions therein. 
the APGLC with some reservation accepted the announcement on the understanding that it would continue to pursue the demand for a full and separate state. The question then asked by several leaders at the APGLC conference was, what should be the name of the autonomous state soon to emerge? Very appropriately, Mr. P. R. Kindia recalls, the name Meghalaya was chosen as it represented the broad outlook which the Hill people represented. The name was first used by the geographer S. P. Chatterjee, who conducted a study in these hills in the late 1920s, used in a doctoral dissertation titled Les Plateaux de Meghalaya, submitted to the University of Paris in 1936. He called the land where the Garo, Kasi, and Jantir reside Meghalaya, the abode of clouds. And this name has come to stay. Meghalaya was made an autonomous state in, a, in an experiment that has not been replicated elsewhere in the country. After, after a relatively long and peaceful movement and campaigning for a hill state, the Assam reorganization Meghalaya bill was introduced in parliament on 15th December 1969 and passed by both houses of parliament on Christmas Eve 24th December 1969. The state was inaugurated by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi at the Garrison Ground, Shillong, 2nd April 1970. The first ministry included Captain Williamson Sangma, Chief Minister Stanley Nichols Roy, Edwin Barre, Stanford Marak, and B.B. Lingdo as ministers. However, Difficulties soon, soon arose over the working of the autonomy in functioning of the new state with regard to the quantum of legislative powers and the functioning of the judiciary, appointments of police and, and the appointments in the, in the police. Casey Pant, the Union Minister of State for Home, went on a visit to Shillong on 14 September 1970, was requested by the APHLC to make Meghalaya a full-fledged state. The party went further at its 22nd session on 19 September to request the government of India to declare the autonomous state as a full-fledged state. It was appropriate that this issue was be discussed in the Legislative Assembly. By a unanimous vote taken on 30th September 1970, the Meghalaya Assembly passed a resolution urging the government of India to bring in place a full-fledged state of Meghalaya. This was followed by meetings on 2nd October and 28th October 1970 of the Meghalaya cabinet with Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Empathic, empathic empathy to the call of the hills, the Prime Minister informed Parliament on 10th November 1970 that Government of India had decided to accept in principle the request for a separate state. The North Eastern Areas Reorganization Act 1970, enacted by Parliament on 30th December 1970, provided in its comprehensive legislation for the establishment of the states of Manipur and Tripura and the formation of the state of Meghalaya and the Union territories of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi inaugurated the state of Meghalaya on 21st January 1972 at the Polo Ground, Shillong, amidst a gathering, a large gathering of people of the new state. I was a young student then in St. Edmunds College on that day the inauguration was held, and I'm happy to have been partic participant in that happy event. This happy occasion was the culmination of the People's Hill State Movement and the commencement of another chapter in the history of the state. And I conclude, as Meghalaya prepares to celebrate its 50th foundation, we recall the role of its leaders and many who participated in the Hill State Movement. They came from a cross section of society, including the young and elderly, with no Hill State, no rest as they refrain, 
With song and banner, they held forth in support of what they believed was their right. The role of the general populace in their movement, in what culminated with Meghalaya, requires to be recalled. A volume or a gallery on the, on the statehood movement would be a befitting memorial to this significant chapter in the state's history. Very typical of a teacher of history, my lecture, which I've just concluded, is based on a number of texts, which include my, for my introduction, British Administration in Meghalaya, Policy and Pattern, published in 1989. The book of my colleague and senior friend, senior friend Milton Sangma, History of, and Culture of the Garos, Books Today, New Delhi, 1981. A very fine book was authored by S.K. Chaube, Hill Politics in Northeast India, Orient Black Swan, Hyderabad, 9, uh, 2012. Interestingly, S.K. Chaube started his career as a lecturer in St. Edmunds College, and between 1971 and 72, I had the pleasure of being his student. I was also a student of the first speaker of the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly, R.S. Lingdaw, whose delightful book, Government and Politics is Meghalaya, is prescribed for this uh, lecture that I've just delivered. And a very fine and concise uh, publication by former governor P.R. Kindia, No Hill State, No Rest, published in 2010. Thank you very much for giving me an audience. Thank you very much. Kublai. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir David. Our participants, if you have any questions, we'd like you to uh, post them in the chat box. And uh, Sir David is here to address your questions if you have any. And as we wait for that, I would just like to announce that participants who would like to uh, receive their e-certificates, kindly fill up the feedback form, which is going to be put up here in the chat box in the next 15 minutes. I repeat again, participants who would like to receive their e-certificates kindly fill up the feedback form, which is going to be put up here in the chat box. So we're waiting for, for questions if you have any, sir, uh, if you can see there in the chat box, um, yes, all of our participants. That. So if you have questions, Please go ahead and ask them. Um, so there's a question here that says, Sir, do Ba hoping role for Hill's state movement was always underrated? Ba, does Ba hoping's role uh, for uh, well, state Hill's state? Hoping Stone linked up would come into the picture very, very much after these events would take place. It was largely the work of the APHLC, and uh, we credit the APHLC for the marvelous work that it did for the entire, the last phase of the making of um, the state of Meghalaya. But uh, I do hold Bar Hopping Stone in very high regard, and the role he played in taking forward the developments of the state after its creation. Uh, he definitely is one of the stalwarts in the functioning of Megala. Thank you, sir. So, ma'am, Evangelist Kongwar, I hope you're happy with that uh, response. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them. There's another question here by um, Eric Sautun. He says, do you think the Meghalaya state movement achieved its true goal other than statehood? It achieved its? True goal. Well, true it, goal. It, it, was ask, it was asking for a, a hill state, which it got. Uh, there was no other goal really, because uh, initially it was an Eastern, uh, India states uh, combined uh, what would have been uh, presently in Mizoram, in uh, Arunachal and uh, Meghalaya and Karbiangla. 
but ultimately these uh, it was left to the APTLC to ask for the hill state only for the Garo, Khasi, and Jayantia hills. Sir, there's a participant here who would like, um, I think what Sir shared is from his, his book. So he says, if you could provide us the drafted notes that you just shared, it will be very much useful to us. Which the notes that I've just given, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, I will hold back this note until the text, uh, mm. uh, the, the book on Meghalaya will be out. And I will be giving a second lecture uh, in one of the colleges affiliated to Nehu shortly after the 50 year celebration, in which the same lecture will be illustrated with a number of photographs and images. Uh, uh, il illustrating my text. I have kept back uh, from providing the images and friends would have to wait for the uh, book that will be released by the Chief Minister on uh, in January uh, 2022. So let me hold back. I, I do have my restrictions on giving my lecture and I would appreciate this. Kublai. Right, yes. Thank you, sir. Now, um, please do only post questions here because I'm having a, a difficult time scrolling. Yeah. So uh, again, Evangelist Nong, uh, Kongwar asked, the GNC and the HSPDP ideology is separate state. What is your view could, on this? Could we go to that question, please? I'm not looking at it on the screen. So the question says, uh, the GNC and HSPDP ideology is separate state. What is your view on this? Um, I was called to give a lecture on the making of Meghalaya. I would reserve my comments on any political developments much after oh. that and into the present. I've not worked on that uh, theme as yet, and I have to be very careful in my conclusions therein. So I will stick to 19... 72 as the cutoff date of my lecture here and maybe at a different forum i'll be able to take up these issues so there's another question here by one plea jones um they ask will there be a garo land state in the near future well, uh, uh, um, I can see Amanda smiling and I'm also smiling over here. This is a long drawn demand of the Garos, but it was never initially a demand uh, through the 1950s, 60s and the 70s. And as I say again, my lecture today is very clearly on the Hill State Movement. And that was a very happy event that it has uh, emerged and we will be celebrating that. The events after that, could be taken up by your own political science teachers and uh, others who have opinion on this. And I would reserve my opinion that if it does come into being, uh, it should be a successful state in its creation and its functioning. Okay, I think we have time for uh, a couple more questions. Uh, Father, Father Joby, if I may ask you, Father, uh, do we have time for a couple more? Yeah, sure. We can go to six thirty. There's a question on JGM Nichols Roy. Yeah. JGM. Uh, so, did uh, Nichols Roy have a role or not in the movement when he is often referred to as the father of the sixth schedule? Uh, yes, definitely, he played a very important role. Um, it's interesting to see in the Hill State movement that the district councils played a very crucial role in the meetings and in the discussions leading towards the state. Um, uh, we must credit the district council, CEMs and members for their creative role and the insistence on the making of the state of Meghalaya. And JGM Nichols Roy played a role over here. He played a role in the constituent assembly, not so much in as a member of the district council, but as a member of the constituent assembly and in the drafting of the constitution wherein provision was made for the district council. So, uh, but then, you know, to use such terms such as father and whatever, uh, mm. I mean, uh, he, he was a member of the, you know, constituent assembly and by putting terms like father and so on, uh, does add a different connotation. Right. 
So we have another one. Um, Roli, uh, Rory Chaji, I'm so sorry. I think I'll answer this. What is the name of the book? So the book, uh, it's my understanding that it's a coffee table book. It's going to be published uh, by the government uh, next we, year. We are, it's, it is not a coffee table book. Uh, it right, is sir. a very serious text on documentation, uh, on, on documentation of Meghalaya documentation of Meghalaya. So it, it'll be a different, very different than the uh, coffee table books that come out uh, so often these days on different uh, facets of Meghalaya. It's a very serious text, which will be richly illustrated. All right, I beg your pardon, sir. So it is a documentation. It will be published next year, right, sir? In we're January. On the job, we're on the job to get it done and hopefully and surely it will be ready by January 2022. Okay. Uh, now, another question. How do we blindly accept the hill state without a proper border drawn between Assam and Meghalaya? Or what is the situation? All right, let's just take the first part of the question. Do we blindly accept the hill state without a proper border drawn between Assam and Meghalaya? Well, this was one of the issues that have come many, many years after the creation of the state of Meghalaya. And it would have been appropriate at a point of time in 1970, 69 and then 72, to have made the boundary issue uh, settled at that point of time, which however was not done. And uh, uh, our political leaders are gripped with the situation of uh, uh, trying to find a solution to the VEX problem of border issue. All right. Another question by Adrian Nongri. Could it be said that much of the social political issues faced by the state currently uh, be due to the failure of the then state leaders in setting out clear objectives other than getting a separate state? Uh, could it be said that much of the socio-political issues faced by the state currently, I in a line permit, demand, border dispute, economic stagnation, be due to the failure of the then Hill state leaders? Well, uh, 50 years have passed from the time, many more than 50 years have passed in the creation of the state of Meghalaya. And it's a very fluid and vexed situation that uh, has moved over the years between 19, uh, 1950, 1960s and the 70s. So these issues would, would come often. And uh, I'm sure our political leaders are uh, taking the situation very seriously and solutions will be arrived in due course of time. All right, so another one is, uh, what was the NVDA nonviolent uh, direct action? Yes, it was a nonviolent uh, movement for the creation of the state of Meghalaya. And it has gone down in the history, in the annals of, the, of Indian history as being spectacular for its nonviolence. Um, uh, whereas in many other places, there was a lot of violence in, the move, in their own movements for, Hill, for their own states. But for Meghalaya, uh, example was set by using very constitutional means. Though they were hartals, though were, they were, uh, 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 you know, you know, picketing and such, uh, it was very, very organized and nonviolent. So these are questions. Yes, Father. That's a question from the YouTube on the. Can yes. Uh, yeah. Just so these are these are questions that we've received on YouTube. What was the role Assam and other states in making uh, Meghalaya as being state? Uh, I wish questions could be asked more pointedly, <clears throat> and uh, whoever whoever listened to my talk would have got the answer that um, in the making of Meghalaya, what really set forth the final demand for the making of Meghalaya and the statehood was the language bill, the language issue of introducing Assamese in, the, uh, in Assam. And this was taken up very seriously and issues centered on this for quite a period of time. Um, so another question here again is, are there any 
unknown people, I suppose, unsung uh, contributors to you know the creation of uh, the state of Meghalaya. Yes, I I think uh, what needs to be done is a very serious research be done. What I presented today is the political activity, but there were many many actors, students, grandmothers, uh, uh, office people. Uh, you know, the common person who participated in the making of Meghalai and their history has not been documented. And I'm sure uh, we will have inspiration in the days to come that a fine book should be out, whether as a thesis, whether as an MPhil. Oh, I'm sorry, MPhil is to be discontinued. Uh, <laughs> but you could have, uh, uh, you know, uh, persons bringing out their memoirs and pulling out photographs from their grandmothers. Uh, albums and such, and uh, singing the old songs. In fact, uh, Mr. Nathaniel from St. Anthony's has got uh, a marvelous collection of images already, and I'm sure these would be used to great benefit in the days to come. Absolutely, sir. I think we'll just uh, take a couple more questions. Uh, this one is again from Evangel Evangelist. So what is your view on reservation? 40, 40, 40% for Kasi and 40% Gauro. I'm sure the uh, person who's asked the question has an answer himself. Uh, uh, and again, this is a question that goes much beyond the lecture of mine. But I would have, won I would have hoped that these issues which are present and very strong in the perception of people today could have been taken up in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, we have waited too long for these issues to be settled. So this is a, um, a question from Sir Billy Domes. Are you, aware that, are you aware whether the leaders of the movement have any documented vision paper, uh, paper spelling out the priorities of the new state? Um, well, uh, much of the preparation for this lecture came from a number of PhD theses which I was able to uh, uh, access and also publications on the making of the state of Meghalaya. But we have a very poor sense of keeping records and uh, uh, this is one of the wars that we historians and researchers have in collecting material to make our presentations. But I do know there are some files of the APHLC which are deposited at the Northeastern Hill University because when the APHLC ceased to exist, its papers were lying uh, in the office and uh, a very thoughtful uh, former member of the APHLC presented them to Nehu. There are not many files, but we will have to look at a much better reorganization of the documentation of Meghalaya. Another question, I believe, uh, from YouTube again. Why do you think the APHLC party didn't last very long? Because of political compulsions and uh, uh, it, it uh, may have lost its fervor in its ideology. Uh, but I would again here reserve my comments because I'm, a, I'm not a politician and I can't make such uh, fluent comments as others would. I go into the past and I collect my material and I have to have a documentation of the conclusions that I arrive at. So another question, what was the main aspect of the All Party Hills Leaders Conference? The Hill State Movement. In one word, the Hill State Movement. I think we are, I have never seen so many questions being asked to a resource person. So you were a delight to listen to. And uh, I think one last one, is this universal, is this universal political book, the documentation that we spoke about earlier, sir? Uh, is it though? Let me just clarify. Let me just clarify, Mr. Francis, do you mean the book that we spoke about earlier? So, yes, sir. Is this 
universal political book. Well, it's a documentation of Megalar, let me say. And uh, uh, Francis uh, would be happy to read it as and when it is published and circulated. And I'm sure we would have done a splendid job in bringing out a publication in, uh, in, in, in the happy events that led to the creation of Megalaya. And it'll be widely available, right, sir? I think I, oh. I missed a question that asked that. Hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, all right, sir. So I think we will begin winding up if we can have one more question and then we wind up with that. Um, do we have the feedback uh, form up? So have, the have, have the district councils in the state yes. outlived their purpose? Uh, as Meghalaya got statehood long in 1960. Uh, yes, um, the, the district councils have a special provision in the Consti Constitution of India and they are uh, urged to function in the way that they should. Uh, they are getting a new role, uh, and I'm sure that uh, with vigor and strength, they'll be able to accomplish their uh, uh, mandated work that, is that the Constitution of India provides for them. There's a, another question here. Meghalaya got statehood long in 1960s, and why is why does it take so long to draft a proper documented history book? I don't quite understand that question, sir. Do you? No, I I don't understand it either. <laughs> Would you like to clarify that question, please? Well, much before this book came out, there have been other books. I mean, uh, 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 Governor uh, Kindia's book is out on the Hill State, uh, and uh, R.S. Lingdo's book, uh, which I've mentioned, which is uh, Government and Politics in Meghalaya. So a number of books have come out over the years, and uh, I've only given the books that are in English. I'm sure there's many in Khasi and Garo and other languages. Uh, and. Uh, uh, there's a whole corpus of material that is available. Uh, so there's a question there by Victor uh, Marwen. Which one is best for the people of Meghalaya, the ILP or the sixth schedule? ILP is a, a new demand. The sixth schedule uh, goes back to the 19, 1947 and so on. But more than anything else, it is the functioning of the state of Meghalaya that brings much happiness to many in the state. All right, so I think, um, so with that, we wind up. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this exhaustive uh, uh, experience and for giving us such, a, uh, such an elaborate presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking all uh, the questions and for giving very pointed, succinct uh, response to them. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, with that, uh, Father Joby, can we wind it up? Yes, fine, it's fine. With that, we have come to the end. Thank you so much to all of our participants. Um, thank you to everyone who is uh, who has contributed uh, tremendously into the success of this first event. As we have said earlier, this is the first of uh, many as uh, St. Anthony's joins hands with uh, the state in its celebration of the 50 years of uh, Meghalaya statehood. So with that, we uh, come to uh, an end. Again, happy weekend, everyone. Uh, we wish you a very good night, a very good evening. Until we see you next time, please make sure that you fill in the feedback form uh, for those of you who would like to receive e-certificates. And we'd request you to please do that in the next 15 minutes. Once again, thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Thank you, sir.